right, so the Ford jaw is on. I'm actually amazed at how well that horizontal bandsaw cut. It just left just that little edge there all the way around, so it's pretty straight. So I gotta set the jaws up. And how I usually do this, <clears throat> I'm gonna stick it in this way. This is an inch 650. So I'm going to set these jaws so that each one is, you know, 800, eight change from the center line of the middle jaw. So <clears throat> that's where I usually start. So I'm going to start around 875. The boiler just turned on, so I'll be right back. Right, almost fits in, so we'll just move each one of them out a little bit more. Ah, it was just one of them. Alright, so we'll split the difference. Alright, so I'm going to go get a piece of either soft copper or soft lead to put in here so I don't mess these this finish up not that it really matters but you take pride in your work right be right back all right I think what I'm gonna do is just put some cardboard in here Tap that up against the face. Snug this up. All right, we'll put an indicator on there. Let's see how far out it is. Alright, because I'm tapped up against the face of that, I should be pretty square. And it's they're not real tight right now, so I, I can move that around a little bit and make sure it's up against there. Alright, see how far out this is. Well, that's not bad at all. Alright, so. Three. Too bad. Four's a little high. Two's a little low. I'm gonna snug that down. Do it just a little bit. I think I, I, think I moved it too much. So I'm about one. One under. One over. 
zero, zero, two, one, one on the, let's see if I can get a little more out of this one. Zero, zero, zero. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Can live with that. center this drill this three-quarter which is the size of the hole in the cap I can go a little bit deeper because the <clears throat> the uh, recess in here that I'm going to bore is bigger than three-quarter anyway so I can go more than I need to than a half an inch deep. I get most of the way through I'll take that off
a little warm. All right, that actually looks pretty good. It's smooth. It's got some, you know, different coloring in it, but it's smooth as glass. So we could put that back in the chuck later and uh, put our uh, chamfer on there, and we'll deal with that with the holes later. So we're just going to put the other tool back in, give it a quick skim, make sure it's dead dead flat. Um, put a, and then we're going to make our little offset feature so that our uh, degree wheel will index on it or register on it. Okay, let me set up and I'll be right back. All right, so I have made some changes on the fly. And some of you may have caught caught it, but off camera, I didn't say anything. I just did it, and I didn't even think about it. I made this 375, and the reason I did that was when I looked at it at half inch, it just looked way too thick. So I only moved over uh, 500 thousandths in the cutoff, or the parting tool was 125. It came right to 374.5, so, and that's plenty thick enough for that. Just half inch looked um, too too thick so that's one of the things I decided to do I measured the particular degree wheel that's going to go on this it is 62 thousandths thick okay the other one must have been 30 or I only put a 30 thousandths offset last time I don't remember but I measured it at 62, so I'm going to make that lip 62 thousandths, or probably 50. Leave about a 10 thousandths um, <clears throat> light so I can, I can squish that wheel. And it's 875, the diameter. So I'm, I'm going to fit that to when it, where it fits the best. Um, if I have to take another thousandth off, I want it to be able to spin freely, but I don't want it to be too loose. So I found a bit... This is a nice bit. I've used this before. So what I'm gonna do is I subtracted the outside diameter, or I should, I should say I subtracted this lip from the outside diameter. I blew up the face. I'm gonna give myself a little line to just rough out to. And uh, once I get it roughed out, then I'll, um, I'll come in and I'll measure it, okay? So I set my homophodite calipers and I'm just going to come up here, touch the side, and give myself a line. Alright, so there's not a lot of room over here on the ways when I'm up that close, so I put my mag back over here. I took off my chart and I use a mini mag over on my carriage to come up against so what I did was I come up against this with my tool I set my zero I'm going to come back over here I'm gonna go I'm planning on going 50,000 so I'm gonna go 40 and I'm gonna reset my zero so that's where I'm going to stop and then I'll go an extra ten to clean the face up. Okay. All right, here we go. And I'm just going to rough it down to there.
So when it's saying about another twenty six thousands, okay. All right, so let's let's go in there and take another twenty six thousands. Ten. Here I'm going to put a chamfer. I can't really put a chamfer on there, so what I think I'm going to do is just scotch sprite it, just just kind of rub the sharp edge off.
So that was the most precision <clears throat> feature on this particular uh, component. The rest of them are clearance. Um, I do have to put a counter bar in here, a certain depth so that the original washer will work. We want a little bit of a uh, area for the bolt to catch on. And because I left this a little bit longer by 125, I just got to go deeper by 125. Uh, but again, that that feature in there is it's it's not real important. I just I'd like to have about I forget it was what it was. I think it was like uh, 200 thousandths um, between the two counter bores, so that I had a pretty good surface for the bolt to catch on. Okay, but now we'll do the counter boys on this side and I'll get set up and I'll be right back all right so I upgraded the print <clears throat> for that um, making this a little bit longer and not choosing to make the cap as thick as half inch um, <clears throat> so basically and, and they, these are actual dimensions so I measured Measured it, it's 826, it's not 825. So what I'm trying to do is maintain 200 thousandths in between these two counterbores so that I have you know something strong enough to put the bolt against. Not that it's gonna be torqued or anything, but I, I want it strong enough so it's not gonna crack. So I need to uh, bore a hole uh, 545 through the center and this is just a bolt relief because that's what the bolt's going to go through so if it was you know if it was a little bit bigger it's not going to be a big deal and then i have to board down through here a one inch 200 around one inch 250 thousandths deep that's a washer relief again if it was a little bit bigger it's not going to make any difference the only one that's somewhat critical is this one right here which is 945. This is going to fit on the crankshaft, the nose of the crankshaft. I'd like that to be pretty close. So <clears throat> I'm going to drill a hole, probably a half inch hole, put my boring bar in there and I'll bore that out another 45 thousandths. And then I'm going to uh, bore this one 200 an inch and a quarter deep from the front. Then we're going to have to flip it around indicate it in we'll indicate it round make sure the sit the face is um true and then we'll go from there okay all right so i went fishing through the drawer <laughs> and i found a 35 60 fourths which is two thousandths larger than that hole one thousand nine tenths I'm just gonna push that hole this is a clearance for a drill I mean a clearance for a uh, a bolt the crank front bolt I don't think a thousandth on a side is gonna make a difference considering I drew the print so I'm just gonna push that through instead of drilling and boring save myself a whole lot of time
thought I was going to get lucky and be able to put this this one through. This one is can't even see it. One and three sixteenths. Um, but it's a number four taper and mine's a number three so I'm gonna have to get an adapter at some point because I have a whole bunch of number fours so it's not quite as big but it'll take most of the meat out of there this one's one and one sixteenth so this one's a number three so we're gonna go in there and we're going to push that back push that hole in there just under two and a quarter and we'll go into a boring bar and clean it up Okay. should be a little short. I don't want to, I, I got to remember the nose. Yeah, we're right around an inch. So I'll go another eight. up with the bar and bar and we'll flatten out the bottom. All right, we're going to take this bar and bar, we're going to touch on the face and we're going to use our mag back to go in an inch and a quarter, right? Yep, inch 250. So I'm just going to come up here and touch this. Make 
actually going to take this out. We're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's one inch. Let's reset this. Set it to 40 ten thousandths cleanup. Actually, let's give us a five thousandths cleanup. And we'll set this to zero. Alright, so we're set to zero. So that's as deep as we gotta go. nice and flat. I just chamfered it with the, the Noga and we'll soften it up with the scotch brake. <laughs> So we're all done on this side. We're gonna take it out and we gotta do basically the same thing on the other side but a smaller hole. Zero, zero, yeah, almost a half. Zero. All right.
Wow. I, I wouldn't have bet money on that. <laughs> All right, so we're ready to roll. So we hit that 9.45, I'd say 5. 9.45, it's supposed to be 9.45. Okay, I'm going to chamfer this. And soften it up with the scotch brake. over at the bench. Okay, so we're almost done. We've got most of this finished up. We got our cap, which is going to go on top of here when it's done to capture it. We did make a, a few deviations from the print. Um, I think it's going to make it better. That's why I did it. Um, this just would have been way too thick at half an inch. It's it's not necessary. I got plenty of room to even uh, countersink a cap head screw if I really want to. So the only thing we got left to do is put the two holes in here, tap them, the two uh, clearance holes in here, and this one's done, and that keyway slot uh, in the back and I'm thinking I'm probably going to have to put some type of a keyway slot in there whether I use I'm probably going to have to use an end mill and what I'm thinking is that the bottom gear um, obviously there's a keyway in there and they don't all use them a lot of Fords don't use keyways in their bottom gears trust me you loosen up that um, bottom harmonic balancer bolt and whoosh, timing is gone don't do it unless you have the kit to line everything up um, but the keyway if I remember right it sticks out past the gear a little bit well it should it should stick out and it should engage the harmonic balance but like I said on Fords they don't do that so I'm probably gonna have to notch this just for clearance I don't need it for drive um, but it came out really really nice this fits I mean it's it's an absolute perfect fit. So, came out really good. Um, I will set this up in the Miller machine and uh, put those bolts, bolt holes in there, tap them, and it'll be the same setup. So I'll probably set it up with a V-block so I can pop this in, do them, then pop this in, boom, and do these two. Same time. Can't really do them together because it'd be, it's kind of hard to hold them. So. Uh, so the, I'll see you at the milling machine probably tomorrow. Um, I'm pretty pretty much done today. So, so far, thank you for watching, and I'll see you at the milling machine next.